Now that we've got the recording process done, it's time to move on to phase two, the editing process. Now the first thing you want to do is take a look at all the different tracks that you've gotten and we want to start doing a, what we call a composite. We want to start putting the best takes, the best phrases, and putting them into one long track. Once we get that, you want to eliminate any odd noises, any hissing, any squeaks, any low breathing noises, otherwise that causes a big problem when we are trying to mix. Once we mix, that brings out all of these sounds and it becomes very hard to edit those out. One of the ways to do that is to use a high pass filter, which takes away a lot of that low rumbling noise, or I like to use the Isotope Nectar Breath Control. Assign it to the track that you want and it will read all the noises and it'll just take them out. The next phase in the editing is the timing and pitch control. Timing can be pretty easy to take care of. A lot of times you have a lot of the back background parts or background vocals that are not in sync and that can become a huge problem. You want to make sure, again this goes back to the point of recording, that the recording is well rehearsed. You know the background parts are very aware of each other, they are playing off each other and they are very in sync. A lot of the problems that can arise in timing, especially when it comes to vocals, is when singing the consonant and the vowel, it's where the consonant starts and the vowel ends, to make sure that that's all together. As well as the sounds like S's, S or SH. Some people hold those out longer when they're saying certain words. Some people hold them out shorter. The vocals need to be tight. They need to understand what each other's doing and feel comfortable while they're doing it. Once the timing's done, I like to move on to pitch. There are many different software programs out there. Of course, Melodyne, Autotune, Wavetune. A lot of groups you will notice today, especially in the pop world, really overuse this software. When we're talking about acapella music, we want everything to be very natural sounding. When you use these programs, be very, very careful. It can be very easy to overdo this and things start to become very electronic, very mechanical, overproduced. A little change goes a long way and now we're ready to have some fun. Mixing, I like to think of mixing as a virtual room that you create, a dance floor. You have a room full of people that are dancing on the floor and they're all dancing to the same song, to the same dance groove. Make sure that all of these people are having fun and they're not stepping on each other's toes. First you want to play the people on the floor. The people are your recorded parts. In an acapella group, basically you would have a bass, a baritone, a tenor, and a tenor. You want these guys dancing around on the floor and you don't want them stepping on each other's feet. We all have the same song that we're singing, so we all have our same groove. The people are our recorded parts and the floor is the mix. There are six fundamental things that you need to have. The six things you need are balancing, panning, EQ, compression, reverb, and automation. The balancing, we wanna make sure that people aren't too loud, too soft. Number two, panning. That's the placement in the stereo image. It's your left and right. And that is also not standing on each other's feet. We got people over here, people over here, people in the center, people on to the right. Now we move on to EQ. EQ is more this, where panning is more this. We got basses that have this part of the floor. Then we have tenors who have this part of the floor. Bare tunes who have this part of the floor. And then we have the lead who has this part of the floor. Take out the space that they aren't using. If everybody is using the same space, we're all just standing on each other and it's just a big bunch of noise. So we want to place them up and down. Now we move to compression. This is the dance style. Everyone's got their own little style. This is the dynamic range so that everybody is heard clearly at certain points in the song. Reverb. A lot of people do not think of sound as being three-dimensional but it is very three-dimensional. We have our panning which is our left and right. We have our EQ which basically is our up and down. Now we have our reverb which creates space. It creates distance in the sound. This becomes our dance groove, which then leads to automation. Automation is very important, especially in acapella singing, because there's a lot of ups and downs and ebb and flows. Sometimes the lead tenor, he's in the center of the circle. Sometimes the bass has his moves, and then the baritone comes in, top tenor comes in. So everybody has their little time to show off. That's what automation is. 
So we got our six basic fundamentals down. So now we move on to the mastering phase. This is our final phase. We want to give it that little extra punch and that big, nice feel. Take the whole project, bounce it down into one stereo track. Once we do that, we open it up in a new project and we start adding little things. I'm going to repeat this again. Do not overdo this. In mastering, always remember a little goes a long way. Not just in mastering, but in the mixing and the recording and the editing, a little goes a long way. Mastering is very hard to do. It's simple to do, but it's very, very difficult. What you're trying to get is just a little bit more compression to bring out things, a little bit more limiting to bring out certain parts of the song, more stereo widening, but it's not unusual for audio engineers to outsource mastering. There are many people out there that are much better at mastering than they are at the mixing. However, with plugins and, and programs like Isotope and FabFilter, there are so many presets that you can literally just go bink and your song is mastered. So it kind of depends on what you want to do, what you're looking for. There's easy ways, there's hard ways, but mastering is the most artistic part of the music production process.